combing the streets, searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters, and you will not return. I'm more concerned with the six-foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises. Before the Germans, before that American. The Eye of Force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful, stand by me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stand aside! I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Welcome to the Talisman, a deep space cargo vessel. We built this ship to show you how unique your world can look when you create high quality custom assets and bring them into your UEFN experience. Hey Michael. Yeah? Can we get Bright Bomber back? We still need a player to help us look around. I think she should be dropping in soon. Oof, okay. Maybe not the most elegant entrance ever, but she made it. And now we can start to explore the ship. Straight away, we're switching off the Fortnite HUD with the HUD controller device so we can show you more of our environment. As Sax mentioned earlier, cameras are also one of the things that can be customized in UEFN. For example, with the new Orbit camera device, we can push way in, past the player entirely. Let's use this camera to explore the crew quarters. All right, this view allows you to focus more on what the player's looking at, and it's helpful if you're interested in making more narrative-style games. All right, how about we compromise and back out halfway so we can see more of our player again? All right, great. Now we're moving across the hall to the common room in the galley. I'm excited for you to see the complexity of lighting in these rooms. We're optimizing for lumen by selectively disabling shadows, reducing light overlap, and swapping in light functions for geometry shadows. Customizing the look and feel of your UEFN game is gonna be a consistent theme in 2024 and beyond. Combining release devices and verse code as we are here gives you the control and the freedom to make your experience unique. That verse code you just saw actually has to do with assigning our player a quest. We're gonna trigger it using several standard devices. But instead of going back to the Fortnite UI, we've styled the pop-up messages and the maps to fit our sci-fi experience. All right, you'll notice there's a waypoint on the map for us now. So we've got a mission to find our crew, so let's get moving. It's worth noting, even though we're showcasing a tremendous amount of detail inside the ship, the total environment still checks in under 200 megs. It's incredible that you can get this level of visual detail in that size profile. And to achieve this, we're relying on a combination of mid-poly kit bash parts, fully procedural materials, and mesh decal. With efficient build techniques, you can make big games fit into small packages. All right, according to our mini-map, our objective is waiting for us on the other side of that door over there. Let's go check it out. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you, and we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. 
as you can see, we carefully optimize for both quality and efficiency. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs in UEFN with an average complexity hairstyle. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. You just save your custom metahumans in the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Roo metahuman preset. Once you have your creations saved in my metahumans, they'll be available to you in our new metahuman importer in UEFN. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Now, we can't talk about metahumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. There are many ways to author clothing, but in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3D, to integrate our metahuman body data into their software and provide a new USD export option for your garments. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Now on screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported from Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4, and from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming UE 5.4, we're introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data and ingest, auto LOD generation, and auto skinning. In addition, you always have the option to take a more bespoke approach like we have here if you want more iterations and finer control. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the default outfit that came in from MetaHuman Creator. Next, we'll add a new uh, Chaos Cloth component. This allows us a place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, add a new animation. So we can see how the cloth moves. Then we come down to the cloth, turn on Simulate, and just like that, we have moving cloth here inside UEFN. <laughs> All right, cool. So from there, our metahuman is ready to be used in the game. And we're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. And you're not limited to clothing our characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles, let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, <laughs> let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural <laughs> effects, if you such want, would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. Let's switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. 
Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. OK, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now, let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects, right? And of course, we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly, actually. Yeah, actually, it's a little cold up here. Or maybe she's um, nervous. Uh, <laughs> and remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity, layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites, but that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow in, of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is sh casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. So you can see Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. All right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain, America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. <laughs> 